What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit, this is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash tales of neckbeards. This story's called, He Thought I Was Cute. Spent a while deciding on whether or not to share the story, so I'm posting this on a throwaway account just in case. Also noting that, even though this is a throwaway account, I'm still good friends with this person as he is trying to better himself and he has helped me out when I really needed it. That being said, if you guys want more, I have quite a few stories about him. I'll post them later on this account. I'll be referring to him as Former Neckbeard. Last notes, I'm typing this on a crappy laptop so forgive any typos. At the time the story starts was about 5-6 to six years ago, so some details are a bit shoddy but I'm remembering them as best I can. Now to the story. I went to two different high schools and I met Former Neckbeard in the second one my sophomore year. At the time I had no idea what a neckbeard was, but this guy was the definition of it, to my obliviousness, loved anime, had a beard that, while not only growing on his neck, it did for sure go down his neck. Strange smell, I'm sure he showered so it could just be that his body chemistry was off, and had a crush on just about every female that moved, including myself when I identified as a female back then. I was also in roleplay groups with him online, which I introduced him to and played D&D with him and our friends. That will be a story for a separate post if you guys want it. The second high school was the one I'd wanted to get into, since it was an arts high school and my dad used to attend it before it changed locations. I was a theater major and was really nervous my first day there. Granted, it wasn't too bad since there were some kids I knew from my arts magnet middle school when I was there in 7th and 8th grade. But I didn't really talk to them then, so while we knew each other and greeted each other, we didn't really interact the first day of sophomore year. At this school, sophomores had their arts class first. Which means my first class of the day was theater. As I said, I saw some kids I recognized and said hi to them before sitting down and waiting for everyone else to arrive, including the teachers. I'm very shy when first meeting new people and don't really enjoy being the center of attention, which is ironic for a theater kid, I know. So I wasn't interacting with anyone that arrived, at least until actual class started. Of course, everyone knows that most classes at the beginning of the year start with introduction games and team building building exercises, especially theater classes. I don't exactly remember what the first games we played were, but I was anxious and nervous to start and I could tell that most of these kids actually already knew each other so they were pulling it off better than I was. Typically when I'm anxious and I can't escape, I start making bad jokes to cope with the situation and try to make people laugh. Former Neckbeard was the first person to genuinely interact with me and calm my nerves, etc. And I remember laughing and enjoying myself towards the end of the class thanks to him. And to this day, I'm still thankful for that, even despite now being aware of his true intentions at the time. He became a best friend of mine, despite the crap and strain our friendship went through over the years because of how his attitude used to be, and he was my first real friend at the new school. Flash forward a few years later, we were either just getting out of high school or already out and I was starting college. I can't remember, and we were talking about our memories of high school. I brought up how I was glad that he was my first friend and made me feel comfortable, and he asked if he could be honest with me. I said sure. He told me that the original reason he'd become my friend then was because he thought I was cute and wanted me all to himself, that he didn't want anyone taking me from him. My thoughts went to, wow, um, what the hell? Okay? But to my credits, I laughed it off and made some sort of offhand comment that I don't remember but we found amusement in it. Sorry it's so short, but I do have more stories about them and a story about a D&D campaign if you guys want me to share them. Or maybe I'll just go ahead and share them later if I decide to. Anyway, stay beautiful, stay lovely, and have a great day. Okay, yes, that was a neckbeard, but I want more! I want drama! I want passion! Post more so we can get more neckbeardness. Yes? This story's called, I realized I have a neckbeard in my science class. Hello gals and dudes, I kinda knew about this thread for a while now and have listened in on a few neckbeard stories from some small YouTubers. I usually listen as a means of background noise while I work on homework or art projects. While watching a video and being a part of a small classroom incident that happened earlier in the day stuck in my little pea brain, I suddenly realized this guy in my poor earth and space science class is kinda a neckbeard. I decided to make a throwaway account 
account just to tell this story. I'm still thinking this is truly a neckbeard story. Sorry if it isn't, I just feel it belongs in a thread like this. I'm also having a bit of trouble typing due to me cutting the tip of my finger on something today. Sorry for any misspellings or mishaps. Let's get this story started. The Cast your new narrator. Just call me Kay. I'm a small Hispanic high schooler who's an artist and a graphic designer, lesbian, kinda important to this, and an avid listener to rap, trap, and hip hop. I like cartoons and a bit of anime, lover of Adidas, dad caps, and denim jackets. Cool with everyone, sarcastic and mean, but I've been mellowing out when 2020 started, if y'all need a mental image of me. My friend, JC, has a good role in this. Gay and flamboyant like your well-known stereotype, short but well-built, smart, sweet, and witty, the MVP in this weird story. Similar interests to me. Science Beard, the man, the myth, the beard. Big dude, I'm talking six foot four and fat, has this weird full neck beard with a wispy mustache, smart and everyone knows, he's cocky about it and often boasts about being different for not vaping or drinking or listening to trashy music, plays D&D and obscure RPGs on his behemoth of a laptop, not well liked in the class for several reasons, basketball shorts and old New Balance shoes. Class Clown, a good mutual, band kid, I'm cool with him and is fun to hang around with, only have him in this class period. Classroom Pierce, you already know. This story officially starts when the last lunch bell rang and the passing period rolls, bringing in the student traffic. I get spat out of the wave of people trying to head to class, make my way to the science hall, greet my teacher and walk into the classroom. I quickly grab a continued astronomy worksheet and a reading packet, say hi to some of my friends and sit down and get to work. It's fourth period, everyone is either tired or rowdy around this time, but today is different, as in quiet whispering and sweet silence. People fill in their seats, bell rings, everyone is already working on the tedious worksheet. Our teacher excuses herself as she leaves the class to talk to some other science teacher, abandoning us for a couple of minutes. People start conversing and joking around, it was still quiet in the class. Class clown asks his friend if he wants to hang out later and drive around after discussing after school band practice. His friend declines the offer, stating he was busy with work. Another peer speaks up. Peer 1 jokingly says, Wow dude, sounds like you've been friend zone. Classroom giggles and chuckles at the idea. Class clown gets confused. What? Peer 1 continuing, You've been rejected by a guy. Class clown getting in on the laughter. Ha, <laughs> yeah right. Some of the classroom students chime in and ask class clown if he's gay. He jokingly replies and gets in on the phone, saying he's straight as can be. I'm already in on this, telling him it's okay to be gay and people agree with me and chuckle about it. It's harmless fun. Science Beard, knowing we are having a bit of unsupervised fun, blurts out and ruins the vibe. I'm straight, but I have a fear of gays. Everyone catches this, looks at him and shuts the small talk up. Whispering ensues and Science Beard states it again. We usually shut Science Spirit up because his antics revolve around boasting about being smart or long-winded questions that have nothing to do with the lessons. I look around to catch a glimpse of everyone's look and reaction. Some girl speaks up. Why are you afraid of gay people, dude? Science Spirit quickly responds to this question, unbothered. Because I feel like they're gonna violate me. Science Spirit says this and shifts his eyes to JC, who at this point backed away from Science Spirit, head down and shoots a look at me, looking livid. Being my dumbass self in this situation, I laugh. I'm secretly thinking, I know someone cannot think or be like this. This has to be a joke. Say psych right now. Science Beard notices a look and tension in the room and quickly changes the answer, kind of stuttering on his words. Well, I, uh, I, I do think gays are human. I just, f I just feel like they might violate me. People are in awe right now for what this dude is saying. Nervous coughs thrown around. JC, having enough of this discussion, turns around and spits a sentence that has me laughing even thinking about it. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure no gay I know will ever touch your big greasy ass, so don't worry about it. The classroom erupts into laughter and howling, cracking jokes of their own. At this point, I'm hiding my face in my cap and trying to maintain myself in my seat. I look back up and see Science Beard giving JC a venomous glare. 
Sign Spirit tries to pick up some of the pieces of his dignity, holding on to his questionable mindset. It's not that. I do have a fear of gays, and I, I know it's gonna happen someday. I'm getting upset at this point and speak my mind on it. Just say you're homophobic, say a slur, or move on. There's no point in defending yourself, you kissless virgin. JC and more people laugh. Science Beard gives me a look of pure fury. He tries to bite back, but the class shuts up as soon as the teacher walks in. Science Beard shuts his mouth. The lecture starts. I get one last look at Science Beard, who is still giving me an angry stare. I shrug it off and get back to my work. That's all I have for today. I'll post my previous questionable interactions with Science Beard if y'all want them. Uh this story's called Karate Beard Part 1. Hi everyone, it's been a while since the last time I made a post here and TBH, I thought I wouldn't post here again. After all, I didn't see Neko Beard again. And if I'm not wrong, he moved away to another city. Now, today I came to talk about a completely new story that's currently occurring. All conversations have been translated from Spanish to English by me. Now, context. I am a brown belt in Karate. My dojo is part of the Japan Karate Association, or JKA for short. I won't explain all about it, but you can Google it if you are interested. All I'll say is that it's a very good place to learn, so that's why I travel from my hometown to the capital city every weekend to receive my two-hour class. And that's also why I'm not the only one doing this. I present you with Karate Beard. Now, our story starts midway through October 2019. My dad dropped me off at my karate class. It's Saturday, 8.30 a.m., just in time for the class. I go in and notice a new face. That's our neck beard. We all get ready to start, and our sensei explains that Karate Beard is a new student, and blah blah blah. Now, to be honest, at first glance, he didn't look like a neck beard at all. He's not overweight, but also not slim. He was a big dude. He was properly shaved and smelled very good. He looked nervous and shy, which was understandable. It was his first class in a place filled with lots of new people. We received him with open arms and everything was normal until, I think, late October or early November. Around this time, things got weird. Now, Karate Beard was my age around this time, 16, and since we were only four people in the class of this age group, I thought it would be a good idea to be friends with him, since the other two are a dude who is a total butthole and a girl that comes mostly to Thursday night classes. I don't go to that one since it's too late for me to arrive on time but sometimes comes to the class on weekends, let's call this girl Miranda. Now, to be honest, she is very pretty. I haven't talked to her a lot, mostly because she doesn't come to class a lot, but I know she's a very good person in general. It had now been almost a month since Karate Beard got in our class, and we have never actually spoken to one another. We both acknowledged each other's existence, but never spoke directly to one another. Now, on this specific day, I decided I would finally speak to him. Here's how our conversation went. Hey bud, how you doing? Oh, uh, hi. Uh, I'm, f I'm doing fine. How about you? I'm fine. Uh, class is about to start. What if after it we go to the subway nearby? I had gotten enough points on my frequent customer card for one free sandwich. Uh, I treat you to a sandwich and maybe we could talk a bit. How about that? Yeah, uh, sure. So basically, class went as normal. We went to eat and had a nice talk. We spoke about anime, video games, and stuff. It was actually a lot of fun. Things started to get weird the day he met Miranda. I arrived at class early and see Miranda is already there. We talk for a bit while class starts, and around five minutes later, Karate Beard arrives. His eyes instantly fall over Miranda. He looks at her while she gives him a hand for a handshake and says, Hi, I'm Miranda. You must be new. Nice to meet you. Instead of going with the handshake, he kneels down, grabs her hand, kisses it, and says, Bonjour, madam. Nice to see you too. I'm Karate Beard. Did it hurt when you fell from heaven, my angel? Miranda just retrieved her hand quickly while laughing nervously. It was clear she was not comfortable. Karate Beard just remained there, still in the same position, looking up at her, like expecting an answer to the question. Everyone in the dojo, it's not a big room, and we were only like five people there, looked at the scene, and uncomfortable silence filled the room. Miranda simply said, ah, You got me there, very funny. 
<laughs> and walked away to her backpack before Karate Beard could reply. Sadly for her, she was assigned to work with him, since both of them are the lower belts in the class. Karate Beard being white belt and Miranda being an orange belt, the rest of us are purple, brown, or black belts. Every time Miranda showed up to class, he would try to compliment her or try to kiss her hand. And Miranda started to show up more to class because there was an exam coming mid-January 2020 and it was late December already. I'm gonna end this here. Something happened after this, but I wanna see what else happens before I write it. All I will say is that there is a second neckbeard to the story. Expect part two midway February or somewhere around that time. I don't know, depends on what else happens. Cliffhanger! Dun dun dun. So much setup and not enough payoff, man. Okay, I mean, that was, that was pretty gross behavior, but come on, get some juicy stuff in there at least. Okay, I'm for sure gonna do part two when it comes out. Uh, I've said that before for other things, but I just forget. But I'm gonna remember this one because I frequent this subreddit because it's a good one. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.